Hi, thanks very much for clicking on the video link. This is another in the series of idle chats with neutrals, mediators, divorce coaches all around the world. Today, I get to talk to a colleague in my old stomping grounds, Pacific Palisades, California. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me, Natalie. Oh, I'm so glad you could join me. Now, I know you've previously seen uh, idle chat videos. You know the lay of the land, the rules. Exist. Those rules? Okay. <laughs> that seems like, you know, we would be constraining things and we don't do that here. All right. So there's no wrong answers. The cards will dictate what it is we talk about. Um, if you're okay, we'll get started. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm okay. We'll see. Ask a question and we'll see if I'm okay. All right. We'll, we'll start with a softball. Miracle okay. Whip or mayonnaise? Mayonnaise. Good answer. That's easy for me. All right. Good answer. Uh, now the next one, I know that as a divorce coach, you get to hear lots of great stories. You've got a front row seat to everything. And this next card may be something that you've had to talk about in one of your sessions. And that is what's the right way for the toilet paper roll to hang over mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. under? Mm -hmm. Over. Over over depending on your goal but if your goal is comfort and putting people at ease over all day over <laughs> all right carolyn next question is are you a good dancer i enjoy dancing <laughs> i think should be my answer i wouldn't begin to to try to to put any kind of um yeah I, I enjoy dancing I think that's a lovely answer yeah. and good on you <laughs> Carolyn are you a traveler or a homebody um, I mean I really like being home I've had some amazing travel I think as as I've aged what I appreciate about travel or being home changed right now I'm really into being home and I've had the privilege of some really incredible travel. I don't, I don't know where that will all go as time passes, but. Right. Some... Things change, things evolve, but at the moment, yeah. cozy and comfy at home. Good for you. All right. The next card, what is your favorite spectator sport? Uh... <laughs> If we're, if we're going to talk about actual sports, I was a gymnast. I can watch it all day. I'm going to go with gymnastics. And what would be a not actual sport? Uh, I'm going to go with like, I, like I could sit on a bench and watch people. So humanity is that if it's not really a sport, but it is a pursuit. And so watching the world and people in it and considering all that pretty good stuff people watching so could, be a sport <laughs> right I could be on the team of the people watching gymnastics no I mm. fall over putting on my pajama pants yeah it's stressful to watch the tension of it yeah I, yeah no I, that I can't do it all right Carolyn can you think of any word that is just a whole lot of fun to say Um, I am a writer. I love words. My, some new word will get in my system and be what I want to use all the time. And so that's like always changing. I think that in terms of the opportunity in a word, I'm, I'm really about yet. It's not a pretty word. It's a kind it, it's not a pretty word. It doesn't sound nice, but what it can do, I think is because you, can, I can't do that yet, or I'm not ready yet, or I'm not there yet. I think it has a lot of possibility. I So a little honor to this tiny sort of clunky, sort of ugly word, but why? It's ugly. It's, it's, why? It has the letter Y is so beautiful. Yes, starts with Y. 
It's a great word. It's packed with action potential. I know. It's a sprint. Love it. I love it. All right. Carolyn, have you ever cut your own hair? Natalie, I only cut my own hair. Good on you, girlfriend. Not I, that, I mean, maybe obvious, started in the pandemic. And then with all due to the many, many, many talented hair stylists in the world, I kind of got to like the, I don't understand why I'm going and getting my hair cut. Like I'm doing, I'm doing okay. And my kids love to cut their own hair. For the moment, I'm cutting my own hair. It's been years now. And you can't tell whether I'm doing a good job or not because I just tie it up anyway every day. It looks lovely. Good Thank on you. you. <laughs> good on you. All right. Next card. What habit do you have now that you wish you had started much earlier in your life? Uh, taking care of my self in a in a manner that you know not being so polite not thinking of taking care of yourself as not being polite and so finding a gracious way to take care of myself that advocates for myself uh, and not worrying so much about being polite and it is a lesson I am using in my raising of my daughters because it's a really important one that's a good skill for all of us to have. It's very, Excellent. very, very empowering and freeing. It is, and not at all selfish. No. no. Good for you. All right, the next card, ma'am. Uh, would you rather live underground, underwater, or in deep space? Underground. Underground. Because? Underwater. Beside water is the only kind of water situation I'm into. I don't even particularly like in water, so underwater. And I, uh, although I like homebody, I mm, space just sounds isolating and at the brink of disaster at all times. So that sounds very peaceful underground. This like that insulation that Earth creates, that quiet, cozy underground. I can totally understand that position. All right. Oh, Carolyn, what is your least favorite household chore? So many. Um, you can list. You can list the top five if you want. Tile, tile, cleaning the shower. I think I'd rather clean the toilet than the shower. Something really just tedious and. It's, uh, it's everywhere. It's my, the, cleaning the shower. Cleaning the shower. <laughs> All right. Um, what kind of nap is the most satisfying in your opinion? Oh, I love a nap. I'm a napper. 30 minute nap, curled in a chair, living room chair, out, I have an out, a little outdoor chair. And it's like, it's a real thing. The disco nap is real. Like I can, I feel like make up for a four hour night of sleep with a 30 minute nap and feel fantastic. I've never heard that term disco nap. Oh, a disco nap is because, you know, it's 10 o'clock and you're just going to go out. And so you need a nap so you can get to 4am. So it's a disco nap because you're going to the disco. Tech. See, I was around during the disco era. I can appreciate that. Okay. But yeah. now a disco nap for me is at, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon because I'm not really out till 4 a.m. anymore. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's tea time. Yeah, that's yeah. that's more my speed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Carolyn, um, if you wouldn't mind uh, answering the last question, um, it's the same last question that I ask everybody else, but would you expand on it a little bit? Um, I know that you're a divorce uh, coach. Um, so would you explain what it is that you do? And then tell me, please, what you love most about that work. I love so many things about the work. Um, <clears throat> so I am a certified divorce coach. I have a special training in preparing clients for mediation. 
and co-parenting is really my passion and my my jam. Um, so I work generally one-on-one with clients and support them through the wherever they are in the process, whether someone comes to me in the sort of should I or shouldn't like making a decision about whether to separate and how to think about it or whether they come in in the middle at a point of sort of overwhelm and looking for more support. Um, I see a lot of people actually after because of my co-parenting specialization that have sort of, you know, done the just expenses and time sharing around co-parenting, but they haven't dug into all the details and they're realizing that there's conflict around that. And I'm there to say that's a lot of that is really unnecessary conflict. So we work on really whether it's hopefully when they're still in the process of sorting out their divorce or afterward, a really detailed parenting plan that brings a lot of peace to people's co-parenting relationship. And most importantly, to their kids' experience of their two-household family. Um, So supporting people through, you know, hearing all their concerns and helping them through, through just really curious questioning, find their path and supporting, figuring out what they need in terms of support and being there with them along the way and recognizing like you're doing a very hard thing does it, this discomfort doesn't mean you're not exactly where you need to be and hopefully getting them into a mindset where they can make choices from a good place and in a transformative way that puts them out the other end in a, in a really good place. So that's the work as a coach. Um, and, you know, it's very, very difficult stuff for people, separation, divorce, co-parenting. And when I can, when someone will trust me with all of their concerns and fears and anticipation and we can together arrive at a mindset that fosters that ability to make those good choices and shows them their own strength which they will use on the other side and will really like set them on a path um, for life beyond and uh, put them when in the case of parents in a space to you know, create a story of their, for that their children would tell this story of their divorce that they can feel good about. Uh, when someone will invite me in that space and we can do that work together, there's just no, there's just no privilege like it to have someone's trust in that way. And to see them find their strength is just beautiful. It is. It's really fulfilling work. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining me for an idle chat. It was really lovely to chat with you. Same, same. I really enjoyed meeting you and thank you for this. It was really fun. My pleasure.